If you're watching this video, it's because you want to do something to help. So I feel the same way. I want to help as well. Western North Carolina is my home, and it's been absolutely devastated from Hurricane Helene. Now, I was up there recently and visited all over these small towns and communities across Western North Carolina, and the one thing that I saw that, that was in common with everyone is that hundreds of families lost their homes, whether it be from elevated waters that flooded the town and ripped people's homes straight off the foundations and carried them down river, or if they were lost from mudslides and rock slides across the region, which a lot of that happened too. And unfortunately, a lot of families didn't evacuate and lost their lives inside of mudslides inside their homes. But there are a lot of families that did evacuate and they lost their homes and now they're homeless. And a lot of them have kids, you know, so there are like hundreds and thousands of people currently that are homeless that are living in tents across the entire western part of the state and the best way i feel like we can solve this is by providing like military general purpose medium tents like each tent could be the size like big enough for a family to fit inside of it and they can heat it with heaters they can you know as long as they're able to like get generators and stuff out there or it'll it'll at least hold the heat in because they're not going to get their insurance claims back before it's wintertime and before it starts to get really frigidly cold up there. And believe me, it gets into the teens. I've seen it get into like single digits up in Western North Carolina and sometimes in the negatives. It is a unsurvivable environment in the wintertime up there because it gets it's usually between 10 and 15 degrees colder, if not more up in the mountains than it is here at the coast where I'm currently located. So. This is a life-threatening situation. We have to get shelter, even if it's just temporary shelter, to these smaller communities and these little supply hubs that have popped out of these various regions that are supporting their local communities because they need it. They need it to provide some sort of temporary shelter to these families and these kids that are now homeless because their home was ripped away from the storm. So... I have been looking around. I know that currently some of the tents I've seen that are like GP medium-sized tents are anywhere from $1,700 to I've seen them upwards of $4,000. Um, I'm going to set, I'm, I'm making a, a give, send, go, and I'm going to set the cap at $100,000. And if we can get up to 100000 then we will dump all of it towards buying tents and I'm going to be working with the Independence Fund and save our allies to get them shipped out there and get them to the people that they need to be dropped off with. Uh, I'm going to be working with various organizations to try to procure them across the Internet. I'm going to find places that can ship them or at least get them somewhere into North Carolina where then I can coordinate getting trucks to come bring them up there to North to Western Carolina and drop them off with these various community centers that are, you know, stockpiling supplies to divvy out to the people because again this is an enduring situation this is not something that's just going away like winter is coming like not only is winter coming but the frigid temperatures of the winter is coming and along with that means like unsurvivable temperatures and you can't survive out there without shelter and some sort of warmth which is why this is such an, uh, an important endeavor and it's going to be such an important task. So if you or anyone you know wants to donate to my Give, Send, Go to help raise, raise money for these tents, I'm putting the link in the description to this video. And you can just click that link and it'll take you straight to the Give, Send, Go. And then you can donate and help raise money to help, you know, provide shelter for these families, even if it's temporary. Because like I said, the insurance claims are not going to be completed before it's winter time, even if they have insurance. And that's if they're lucky to have insurance. A lot of these folks didn't have any insurance. They spent their entire life savings on their home and they bought it and didn't really think about like, you know, uh, I need to get life insurance or I need to get house insurance. or I need to get this, that, and the other thing. They were like relatively poor people, you know, living out in the country in these mountain hollers and they don't have any money. They don't have anything. And they're, they're, they're homeless now. So like, what are they going to do? Nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be dependent on these communities to like lift each other up. And the best I think we can do is at least help support them from the outside and get them some sort of sustainable position where at least they can survive through the winter time and 
not have to worry about freezing to death while they're figuring out how they're going to get building supplies up there to build, like rebuild their homes with. A lot of people have homes still, but they're not able to live in them full time because there's like entire sections of their roof that are gone or, you know, or their, their home, if, they, if it wasn't gone, ripped out completely, it may be completely ruined with flood damage. And they have to gut the entire thing and redo all the plumbing and redo all the electrics and redo all the insulation. And in the meantime, they don't have a place to live. So they're staying in small tents, you know. And these GP medium tents are a little bit thicker than your average, like, L.L. Bean or REI tents that you're going to find, like, at these sports stores and sporting authority stores. Because they're made for troops. They're made for, like, you know, keeping platoons or squads of, you know, Marines or our soldiers or airmen or whatever out and helping them sustain in the field during like very cold conditions. So that's another reason why I think this will be a, a viable option to provide some sort of like limited sustainability for them, at least to help them get through the winter time. And like I said, I'm going to be working with the Independence Fund and Save Our Allies to distribute these things because they're still up there in Western Carolina and they're still working with these local community centers to distribute supplies. Um, again, outside of this fundraiser that I'm doing to try to get money together for tents, if you want to donate stuff that's like heated related, like heating related, like heaters, propane heaters, anything that generates power or electricity, like uh, solar panels, solar panel generators, any type of generator is going to be extremely valuable. When I brought six up there this past, like, like last week or the week before, um, they were gone within minutes of getting to the areas that we distributed them to. Like, they were immediately going to somebody's house to help them. Like, immediately. Uh, one place, like the Avery County Airport, when we dropped off one of the generators or two of them there, uh, within within, like, a few minutes of them getting put away into, like, the storage area... They were rolling them back out the door again to an old lady, an old couple that was on oxygen that needed to have electricity in their house because their house still didn't have electricity. And a lot of these homes, like they've said that a, the power company is anticipating that a lot of these places are not going to have electricity, could be for months, could be into the new year, which means that they're going to be through November, December, possibly January with no electricity which means no heat, which means, you know, temperatures in the teens. And for old ladies and, like, kids and stuff like that, that is a death sentence. This is, I think, an extremely important thing we're doing. And if you can help me help all these folks up there and help get them some sort of temporary shelter, I genuinely believe that this is going to have a massive impact, um, not only for the kids and the, the elderly, but also for the communities because it'll help them get back on their feet quicker and they'll be able to sustain for a longer period of time while they're waiting for building supplies to arrive to start repairing homes with, while they're waiting for insurance claims to go through so that they can get the money that they need to purchase building materials with. You know what I mean? So whatever you guys can do, again, the Give, Send, Go is going to be in the link in the description. Please do whatever you can and share this around with as many people as possible. Like, the more people we can get into this, the better, because I think this kind of stuff, folks folks get a good feeling about helping people, especially their local Americans. And a lot of the times, a lot of the stuff that you see on the internet is not like helping here Americans at home. A lot of it's like sending money overseas or sending money to like something that's just for one person. But this is going to impact tons of families across all Western North Carolina. So I believe that what we're doing is important. I believe that what we are doing using social networks and social media to get the word out about ways that you can help, because not everybody can get out there personally and shovel dirt and shovel mud and like stack water bottles and distribute food because a lot of people have their own bills and stuff like that and they've got to pay for their own stuff and they have to go to a job and they can't just take off of work and travel across the country to go volunteer their time somewhere. And I get that. I'm in the same boat. I can't just leave work and go up there. I have to actually take leave to go up to Western Carolina because, first off, it's still out of bounds for me unless it's a 96 or something. But, uh, you know, I'm still, you know, I still have a full-time job. I can't just, like, leave anytime I want. I have to ask for permission for it. So I'm I'm right there with you. 
it took me two weeks to almost to get up there, unfortunately. And the next time I'll be able to get up there is not going to be until probably Veterans Day weekend because it's a four day weekend and I might be able to get up there then, which is what I would like to do. But the overwhelming majority of people want to help, but they can't get there personally. So here's a way for you, all of you out there, to help the people of Western Carolina without having to actually physically be there. And believe me, this is going to go a long way for them. Now, I know we've been distributing tons of stuff like generators, heating, uh, heating related tools and like heaters, propane, uh, blankets, sleeping bags, things like that. A lot of that stuff is still needed a lot because it's still needing to get distributed out to the to the local population that maybe didn't get the support from FEMA or all the other major organizations that they need. Now, don't get me wrong, like FEMA's in some of the larger areas, but a lot of these small areas, they're just not really existent there because they're more focused on the larger hubs, right? Getting the larger population centers back on their feet. So the best way to help these Local people is through the the non-government agencies, the NGOs like Save Our Allies, like the Independence Fund, like Samaritan's Purse, like the Cajun Navy, like Operation Allies Refuge Foundation. All these organizations that are up there helping clean out people's houses, help cleaning up churches, help taking trash out, helping donate things, helping feed people, helping cook food, helping do wellness checks on people that haven't been checked up on, like that kind of stuff. There is there is still a need. It is an enduring situation, like I said. So whatever you can do to help and whatever you can do to contribute, whether it be donating to this Give, Send, Go or just sending supplies out there, please do something. Because in my mind, if there's something that we can do, we should. For that's That, that, should, be the, that should be the standard for Americans. If we can do something, we should. So anyway... I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. If you're still here, please share this with everybody you know. Share the the Give, Send, Go to everybody you know and help us get the word out so we can raise money to buy these tents to donate them to these local communities. And I think together we can make a real difference.